faith comes by hearing. That is why we need to hear about healing anointing. That is why we need to hear about blessing anointing. That is why you need to hear about delivering anointing. I take it again. Faith comes by hearing. That is why we need to hear about what? About healing anointing. Delivering anointing. Blessing anointing. Because the faith come by hearing. We all know Jesus always respond to those who put a demand on him. Always. Always respond to those who put what? Who put the mind on him. What a blessing. Teaching people who are hungry for the word. You know, when you have people that are hungry for the word and you are teaching them. What a blessing. So and I believe I'm in the midst of people that are hungry for the word. Are you one of them? Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now the job is half done now. You have scored 50%. I say you have scored 50%. Yeah. If you even decide to live here now and uh, maintain one you have received, it's okay. So let's talk about maintainer. Hallelujah. What you have been listening to this morning, if you can meditate over it, over and over and over, this is what your enemy does not want you to hear. This is what your enemy does not want you to hear. Even many a time when you are at home and you are listening to the Manor TV, a lot of distraction. So the time you have to pay attention to what you hear now is always difficult for you out there. Because there are so many things to attend to. So I want to say congratulations once again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let us pray for the viewers. We want them to have the right focus. Because you know what it means? If you're out there, a lot of, in the midst of confusion, distraction, here you switch up your set. You don't want to hear anything. You have so much grace. But in the, over there, our viewers are home, anywhere they are, we know the situation they are in. So many distractions. So let's pray for them and ask God to give them the right focus. In the midst of our oh, right focus, stretch your hand. Let's pray together. Viewers all over the world. We want to be like Jesus in our hearts. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is disturbing you right now, you know, our heart is always going up, down, up, down, up, down. Think about this, think about that. Leave it for God. We pray for right focus in the name of Jesus. Right focus in the name of Jesus. Begin to receive a hearing heart. 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 In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Faith comes by hearing. 
That is why we need to hear about what? Healing anointing. And once you hear it, put a demand on it. When the healing is going on, put a demand on it. If you are sick, you'll be healed. Blessing anointing, it being pronounced on a person. You immediately, you need blessing, put a demand on that blessing anointing. You'll be blessed. How do we put the demand? That is, get connected. Just believe. If this actually go in the true processing, true processing means free we are given and free we shall give you. Without money exchange. Though deliverance cannot take place without God's processing. Healing cannot take place without God processing. Blessing can never. If somebody says, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Are you sure God's blessing or you are talking of man's blessing? If it is God's blessing, it must go through God's processing. There's a process for everything. You know, processing is more important than resort himself. You say you are rich, okay? Rich man. How you become rich is bigger than that your rich, your resource. Processing is bigger than resort himself. How you get there is bigger than get there. This, this is the problem with people. Everybody want to be big, want to get there. And uh, follow any way, any processing. No, the processing will help you to maintain the loss. If the processing is tampered with, if the processing is not God's processing, you will not be able to maintain that resource. So you say, oh, yes, you become rich. What processing take you to that riches matter because to maintain that riches you need that processing if it is not God processing and you get there you cannot maintain that riches it will disappoint you at a dear time you need it this is why you see people today very rich but today is poor very very rich at the time of need, the money is gone. I say, ah, the money is there. It's just, it's all about processing. Healing. It must go through God's processing. So processing is greater than research. What matter is processing? Tell your neighbor, what matter is processing? I can't hear you. I can hear you again and again it's processing it's, pro it's processing processing so the manner we process our life is what is working against us or working for us you want to get married what is the processing of getting married to that man? Is it very in the very in line with God? Or the man is handsome, that is why you marry the man, or the man has money. If it is in line with God, you get married, that processing will stand for any challenge you have in that marriage. What can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. If processing is of God. What can separate me from the marriage? If that marriage followed God's processing, nothing can separate you. Nothing you hear from that your husband have done, your wife have done, you examine, you still ask God. You want to know God, opinion. 
no matter what happened to the marriage, I still want to know God's opinion. Because God can use any foolish thing to strengthen the marriage. Your business today, you know, you jump from one business to another because of crisis. When you invested to the business and it's not yet coming, you abandon the business. You cannot, because of lust, abandon business. You can't just because of uh, evil sickness abandon business. You lost, you have spent money, you run bankrupt. Because of that, you can't, because of those things, abandon your business. You can only abandon business when God say, quit. The same marriage. You cannot, because of crisis, abandon your marriage. You cannot, because of challenges, abandon your marriage. No matter what happened to this marriage, you cannot, because of that, abandon your marriage. Unless God say, quit. Because if the processing of your marriage is in line with God, Nothing can separate you. Because sometimes God can allow foolish things in our way. Those foolish things, they are college, they are school. You need to go to school of embarrassment, school of praises, school of persecution, school of progress, school of failure. Many of you that are here today, if I have not graduated in persecution, I would like to tell you about persecution. If I have not graduated in accusation, how will I be telling you about accusation? If I have not gone into school of hatred, I know much about hatred. People hate me so dearly. If I have not gone through that and graduated in that, how will I be standing to counsel you about hatred? It's just like that. Processing, tell your neighbor. It's very important. This is what Paul means. He said, what can separate me from the love of God? Can death, sickness, disease? He's talking about processing. If his love for God is in line with scripture, you say, I'm a Christian. In line of, with scripture, you become a Christian. Nothing can separate you. Let's say again. If your marriage is in line with God, scripture, nothing can separate you from that marriage. Trouble will come. Disappointment will come. Failure will come. No, it will come. It will just come and strengthen the marriage. Evil sickness will come, it will just come. After that sickness, marriage will be strengthened. Disappointment will come. They will come and tell you that, ah, we saw your wife in so 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 play. Your wife is going out with this so 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 so. Is this so so so? Oh, you see the phone number. You even see the phone number. You still need to ask God, God's opinion about the matter. You just need to ask God opinion about the matter if God brings you to a relationship the same God will quit you but if you bring yourself to the relationship you quit yourself how you come about the marriage you come about you come to the marriage by yourself not by God you quit when trouble come but when God brings you to the relationship no matter what happens it's the same God that will quit you when it is time, if you have not seen God, no matter what happens, you have to go through it. God's processing is the mind of God. Now you can say now that processing is greater than result itself. If you follow the right processing, and you are not getting results, don't worry. Don't worry. You are about to get the mother of results. Amen. You know, that's what we call mother of miracle. You do the right thing, but 
yet no results. Don't be disappointed. If you have done the right thing and you're expecting the result to come, all you need to do is be patient. Look at Anna, look at Simon. You are about to get the mother of result. So look at your case. Sometimes you, are, you feel sick as a Christian. You run to God for prayer. And the more you pray, you seem the sickness is still there. You keep praying, the sickness is still there. Not that God does not hear you. God may realize that that sickness will strengthen you better. You will strengthen your desire for him better than healing. And he will allow you to go through that sickness so that he can strengthen your desire and your determination for him. When we are sick, we keep seeking his faith, seeking his faith, fast more, fast more. But the moment we are here, relax. So when God realizes that uh, leaving you to go through the sickness will strengthen your desire for him better than when you are here. Or God may realize that uh, your situation may strengthen your desire and your determination for God to move closer to God when you have challenges, trouble. He will leave you till you are very, very strong. Too strong, then you get here. It is only concerned about the relationship. It's our the relationship is what matters. Many of us are here today, what you have been asking God to do for you. Your business, you want it to prosper. It's not that God does not hear. God hear. But God realizes that uh, when your business is prosperous, you will likely not be able to sit among your people. You will allow this word to start controlling you instead of the source of that word to control you. You know, when you have so much money, money will now begin to control you. You need to go to the meeting. I need to go to sign the contract. I need to do this. Instead of the source of that, the, the one who gave you the money to control you. Look at, okay, look at. Where you live today is what your possession can purchase. When you live in a village and you have money, you, you abandon the village to the city because your money has come. It's, in, it's nature, it's natural. That is human being for you. That if you are living in a village, Later, you have the business and money come. You abandon the village to the city. Me, it is this money that controlling us, not the giver. You can be very rich and still remain in that village and develop the village and give them light and be, rebuild your house and live among your people. But today, we abandon our people once the money comes. We go to a better place. We look for our colleague. If you are less privileged and you are rich, you move to the privileged people. It is the, the money that controls us. We, we go into our state tour. That is it. Some churches, you see, we have to arrange for the different seat. When you just enter a place of worship, you can see that, oh, this is where big people sit. This is where privileged people sit. This is where less privileged people sit. Who is privileged before God? Who is less privileged before God? Who is rich before God? Who is famous before God? God is concerned about the soul that are saved. No matter the situation you are, you can begin to feel the presence of God by beginning to have it in your mind that you are not alone. Now, like I'm here now, I, I'm not alone. So as I'm, if I want to say something, check me. I will not want to say anything that he will not want to hear. You have to engage him 
to show that you know him that is with you, you have to be talking when someone is talking to you. When someone is addressing you, don't remain silent. Talk so that you can arrest whatever that is not pleasant. And on the phone, when you are receiving a phone call, hello, you too, that hello, you say it, you say another one in the spirit. To arrest any situation, any message you want to hear. Hello, how are you? Fine. Where are you now? Mm, you, you say your prayer before you respond. That is to show you are not alone. So, like you are watching me, you have to be saying your prayer. Saying, this is how you will start. When you start here, you continue to do that. You start here, you continue to pray. Like you, I'm talking to you, you have to say something, begin to say something. Don't keep silent. If you are silent, your God will silent. If you talk, your God will talk. And if you are silent, we cannot place you. Mm. T.B. Joshua, how are you? You cannot place me, whether I say fine or not fine. Mm. You have to place me. I have to talk. It's still processing. We should cherish processing. Let me give you a good example of this world of processing. I want to pray for you now, but in my heart now, I'm coming to you. I begin to doubt. Will God heal this woman? I don't know. And I'm a liar. I don't think God will heal this woman. Will God heal this woman? I don't think God will heal this woman. Be healed. Be healed. God cannot heal. Because processing is wrong. The processing is wrong from here to over you. What? going through my heart, what's going through my mind, it, they are processes, we call it ingredient to make soup. If you don't have a good processing, those ingredients you put together, you can have a wonderful soup. But when you put those ingredients together, pepper soup or whatever you want to make, good one, by the time you finish cooking it, people will enjoy the soup. The same way with prayer, the same way with your life, with the same way with whatever you will become in future. Let's say one say processing. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The processing of your life is what is affecting you today. The processing, how you started. At the beginning in those days, you say, oh, if I finish university, I will settle down, I will get this, I will get that, I will get this, I will have wife, I will have children, boy, girl, it's okay, I will settle down. But after you have had all this yet, what you are looking for, you have not yet getting it. Say, if I travel to America, I stay there and I work, you work processing we should cherish processing than resort tell your neighbor I can hear you I can hear you and this processing we are talking about that are not in line with God is the food of witchcraft when you go by a processing that is not in line with God. That is what witchcraft eats. And when you have something witchcraft will eat, it will come to you and attack you. They eat unfaithfulness. They eat disobedience. They eat hatred. They eat pride. And you are very proud. You are a proud person. Witchcraft will come to you because that is their food. Lying, you know how to lie. Witchcraft will come to you and afflict you because the food of witchcraft is lying. Disobedient, unfaithfulness, pride, self center. These are the food of witchcraft. And when you go by that processing to build your life or build your business or build your career, whatever you build with this in line with all this, 
you are given food for witchcraft. Witchcraft will be part of you. Let someone say processing. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. That's all. Cherish processing more than resort. Tell your neighbor. I can't hear you. That you are in line with God to build your career. In line with God to build your business does not mean you will not be attacked. But each attack, promotion. <laughs> Take note of that. Because if I don't put that one now, you will just, hey, what this man is saying, I'm in line with God, but I'm being attacked. If you are in line with God, follow God full step, full hope. To do whatever you are doing, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, self-control, and uh, I mean humility, to build your life, to build your marriage, to build your children, there will be big attack. The bigger your attack, the greater your improvement. That is why today, when you learn that uh, ah, something happened to this man, something happened to this man. The, what you hear from people is, ah, if it is God's position, if it's God that called him, he will prevail. I know last time when the accident happened in this church here, the mind of everybody is that, uh, ah, if he's called by God, no Jupiter, the whole world cannot stop him. But if he's not called by God, the incident will bring him down. This is what Gamelian said. He is a professor. He said, look, leave this man. Leave this man. If what he's doing is from God, you will not be able to bring him down. Whatever you do to him, you are doing it to yourself. Oh. Leave him alone. But if what he's doing is of man origin, you will get rid of him. So that you are in line with God, you follow God step, step by step, to build your life. Does not mean attack, challenge will not come. But when they come, each challenge take you high. Once again, processing. Cherish processing more than, more than result. Tell your neighbor, when you want to achieve something, what you do to achieve it is better than achievement. Look at your education today. You say you are a, you are a professor, you are a graduate, you study, you face challenges. If you know what you went through to achieve the position you achieve, it is the processing that is working against us. We get it and left God behind. Because we can read and understand what we are reading. And we don't know that education is not the source, but to help us get the sources. There's what we call supernatural gifts. Human natural gift, when you have it, this human natural gift, you can come out first class, best student in the, in the school. But there's a difference between supernatural and human natural. You can be the most intelligent, the most brilliant student in the world, coming out first class, human natural. It is a supernatural that takes us to places with peace of heart. That is why it's possible today in the world to be the best in your career. Are you a, a footballer? Best footballer in the world? Uh, whatever you are doing, speaking skill, ability to inspire, you can be the best in the world. And yet, 
not believe God. Because they can do all this without God. Because all this can be achieved by human natural gains. How you process your document will determine the outcome. Cherish processes than results. Somebody may sit for exam for you, and you will not be the one that sit for it, and somebody will do it for you, and you come out first class. Processing. You are not the one that did the exam. You carry the certificate. Somebody have done it for you. That is wrong processing. And the processing is better, greater than the result. This is challenging we are facing today. You say you are a Christian. Christian has a process. If all these processes are not right, and you say you are a Christian, you will confess Christianity, but you will not live life of Christian. What is the life of Christian? To be a Christian is to be content. That is not about. The moment you know you are not content, agree with me, you are not a Christian. Contentment. Whatever anybody become, that will not bother you. Whether you have little or you are not eat, you'll be content. Whether you have little money, you don't have money to go there, and everybody has money to go there, you'll content. The contentment is possession of a Christian. It's not how much wrong. When wrong come, how do you handle the wrong? As a Christian, when you are wrong, your soul, your spirit will be disturbed. You are not content. You always can't day by day, tomorrow, I'm, t I'm so so here, I'm so so that I have not achieved this, I'm schooling day to day. You're always complaining. You are not content. You believe that you are being cheated. You believe there's a wishes and wizard that after you. And uh, by your prayer, when you are praying, one can know whether you are a Christian or not. If I want to know whether this man is a Christian, if I call him now to pray, through his prayer, I will know he's a Christian, he's not a Christian. How do we know Christian? Through prayer. Christian, because he's content, he may be sick and will say, thank you, Jesus. I glorify your holy name. I thank you for today. And I will continue to thank you for all what you are about to do and what you have done. Thank you. And we will begin to sing. Whereas he's sick. Because he has left everything for God. He know God know him more than himself. But when you are not a Christian, immediately they ask you to pray, God, thank you. I'm sick. Hear me. I'm sick. Hear me. Please hear me. My brother yesterday was he, and I'm better than my brother. Hear me, Lord. I've been coming to shore for the past many years now. And this man just come today, and he was he. Lord Jesus, don't leave me. Hear me. If you don't hear me, I may not come to this church again. <laughs> And indeed, you will not come again. Look at. If the processing of this carrot is wrong, when you taste it, you know. If it is built by fertilizer, not natural soil, give me the one that actually built by natural soil and the one of fertilizer. When you taste it, you will know the difference. In fact, the one with fertilizer are fed the heads. The same thing, those chicken, you rare. Fishes, you rare. Water, everything. Processing. Let's almost say processing.
Many of us are here today for the first time, and you have forgotten yourself. And when you think back, you realize that in every one hour, you must take your draw. If you don't take your tablet, you have feet. But today, you are sitting down for the past six hours, you have forgotten your tablet. You are just forgetting yourself. And nothing happened to you. Many of us are here. If you are not here, you will have gone to toilet up to six, seven, eight times because of diabetes. But for the past seven hours now, you have been sitting down, no toilet. Because Jesus has taken more of you and give you more of him. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that means you have forgotten yourself. When you are forgetting yourself, this will take over. When you live here now, by the time you just move outside there, you start remember yourself. Ah, I have diabetes. I've not taken my drug today. And the moment you remember, you ring, you are pressed. If you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. Tell your neighbor, if you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. To forget yourself is to forget your challenge, your situation, your predicament, your worry. Tell your neighbor, if you don't forget yourself, you cannot follow Jesus. Remembering yourself, following Jesus, is serving two masters. You are serving two masters. You follow Jesus, at the same time, your challenge, you remember. Your trouble, you remember. Your worry, you remember. And you are following Jesus. It's serving two masters. You must forget yourself to follow Jesus. A sample of forgetting yourself is when you sleep. My brother, when you sleep, your sickness sleep. Until when you wake up, you start feeling the pain. When you wake up like this, you start feeling the pain. Ah, headache, headache. But when you are sleeping, you don't feel that pain. This is why the scientists decide to be given you pay killer. When they give you this tablet, you sleep off. At that moment, no pain. But when you wake up, the pain started. That is a sample of forgetting yourself. In the same day, when you forget yourself, you have ability to follow Jesus. Because with Jesus, no worry, no anxiety, no challenge, no everything, no. In him, there's nothing like that. That is why when you are following Jesus, Challenging your truth, I mean, challenge is not there in Him, in Jesus, no challenge, in Jesus, no worry. So, it's not possible for you to follow Him with worry, with challenge, with your situation, because in Him, there's nothing like that. Thank you, Jesus. We was all over the world. We are going to his presence for healing, for deliverance, for all of his blessings. Make sure your heart is not fearful. Make sure your heart does not condemn you. Make sure your heart is in perfect fellowship, which is living well. Be conscious that you are welcome. Now we can present our petition. Are you there? Make sure your heart 
does not condemn you. Whatever your heart is saying, why this, why that, did, did it, set it right now before you go into his presence for healing, for deliverance. Make sure your heart is not fearful. Your perfect fellowship, which is living word, is required. Be conscious that you are welcome. Indeed, you are welcome. Amen. Are you there? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Viewers, wherever you are, whatever medium you are using to watch us right now, you are welcome. You are welcome. Amen. You are welcome. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to ask Jesus, the Holy Ghost, to reign on us. Power of deliverance. To reign on us. Power of deliverance. Amen. Holy Ghost, open your heart right now to receive him. Begin to welcome him into your heart. Welcome him to your heart right now. Welcome him to your heart. at home, viewers all over the world, begin to welcome him. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. Holy Ghost, you are welcome. Free our heart to welcome you. Release our heart to welcome you. Release our heart to welcome you. Release our heart to welcome you. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Release my heart to welcome you, to welcome you, to welcome you. You are welcome. Holy Ghost! You are welcome. 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 Holy Ghost! Saint Esprit. The name of Jesus Christ. Power of deliverance. Power of deliverance. Power of deliverance. Power of deliverance. Release your children. Do it again. 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 In the name of Jesus. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Whatever spirit attacking their body, whatever spirit attacking their body, whatever spirit attacking their body, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Whatever spirit, their blood, their flu, their tendon, their bone, 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 their blood, their blood, their kidney, their kidney, their kidney, their kidney, their liver, whatever spirit attacking their body, whatever spirit attacking their body, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Cualquier espíritu. Whatever spirit 
spirit of infirmity, spirit of sickness, spirit of disease, spirit of disease, spirit of cancer, spirit of diabetes, spirit of hypertension. I say whatever spirit, whatever spirit, whatever spirit attacking their body, attacking their organ, wherever it is, wherever in the organ. What do you Spirit of come on, come on, open your lips. Command them out, command them out, command them out, command them out, command them out. Command them out, command them out, command them out, command them out. Ordene them fuera. You are command to be relieved. That spirit. Leave my people. Leave my people. Leave my people. Leave my people. Open your lips, open your lips, open your lips, open your lips. Abre tus labios. Huevo leva, como des esprit, un peu de puissance dans votre corps. Watch your screen. As you're praying, see what God is doing at miss. Change! Oh! 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 Fuera! Holy go, holy go. Holy go, holy go, holy go. Holy go, holy go. Open your lips, open your lips, open your lips, command them out, command them out. Command them out, 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 command them out. Command them out. Watch the screen. Poisonous substance is what they are permitting out. You can see that is not ordinary blood, but the poison. I command that infirmity to leave you. I command that disease to leave you. Leave my people. 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 Open your lips. Open your lips. Viewers out there, this is time for you to stay connected. Distance is not a barrier. What is happening right here can happen to you right in your bedroom, your sitting room. All you need to do is to connect by faith and begin to tap into the anointing in the house. In the mighty name of Jesus, your healing hand on your children. Your healing hand on your children. Your healing hand on your children. Your healing hand on their bones. Your healing hand in their kidney. Your healing hand in their organ. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Maintenant, dans ma guérie, sur le sang, sur le sang, dans le foie. Stretch your hand. Receive the healing hand of Jesus. Extend your hand. Be healed. 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 Open your lips. Open your lips. Open your lips. Open your lips. Wherever this is located, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I say, ah, in the name of Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Continue to watch your screen as you are praying. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Wherever that sickness. Wherever that is, I command them out in the name of Jesus. Be it your blood. I say, oh. be it your blood. Be it your kidney. I say, oh. be it your liver. Wherever in your organ. I say, command them out. Command them out. Open your lips. Begin to command them out. Command them out. Commandez cette maladie de sortir sur tous cette infirmité dans vos os, dans vos sang, dans vos reins, dans vos foies. Commandez cette infirmité de sortir dans le nom de Jésus. Ahora mismo ordena la enfermedad que salga fuera en el nombre de Jesús, de tu hígado, de tu hueso, de tu sangre. Commandez les sortir. Commandez moi. Ordenez les fuera. Commandez moi. Commandez les sortir. Ordenez les fuera. Continue to watch as you're praying. See what the Lord Almighty is doing as a confirmation that your troubles are going out, your failures, your disappointment are going out right now. You can see what is happening. These are the ones the eyes can see.
people are also vomiting out. out In there. the mighty name of Jesus, Christ. let me build your spirit up. I say to your heart, awake in the name of Jesus. 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 Despierta en el nombre de Jesús. Jesus is about to come. Awake, 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 awake. Say Jesus is on his way to my heart. My heart away. Mi corazón despierta. My spirit away. Open your lips, 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 open your lips. Abre tus labios, espíritu, corazón, despierta en el nombre de Jesús. Jesús Cristo está en el camino. Jesús 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 Cristo está en el camino. My spirit away. Espíritu. My spirit away. Mi espíritu despierta. Be prepared. Awake, 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 awake. Despiértate. Mon esprit réveille-toi. Right now, welcome Jesus, welcome the Holy Ghost. Welcome Jesus to your heart, welcome the Holy Ghost. Begin to welcome Jesus, welcome Holy Ghost. Welcome him, welcome Holy Ghost. Commencez à accueillir le Saint-Esprit Jésus-Christ dans votre cœur dans le nom de Jésus-Christ. Allez la bienvenue à Jésus-Christ et à l'Esprit du Saint à ton cœur. Right now is at the door of your heart. Just at the door of your heart. Il est à la porte de ton cœur. At the door of your heart. Welcome him, welcome Holy Ghost. Allez la bienvenue. Welcome him, welcome Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Saint-Esprit, Esprit du Saint. Welcome him, welcome Holy Ghost. Accueillez le Saint-Esprit. Dale la bienvenida al Espíritu Santo. Whatever that is not of Him, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Sickness, disease, infirmity, be removed. Whatever that is not of Him, your weakness, that sickness, that infirmity, that infirmity, that disease, that disease, right now begin to remove them, remove them, remove them. Command them out, command them out, command them out, command them out. Jesus is around. Jesus is at home. Jesus is in your heart. Command them out. Tell them. Destroy them. Command them. Destroy them. Command them out. Command them out. In your blood. In your blood. In your flu. In your tender. In your kidneys. Hey! Jesus is with you. Holy Ghost is in your heart. Say Jesus is with me. Holy Ghost is in my heart. Prayer. 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 Jesus is with me. For me. Holy Ghost in my heart. Holy Ghost. Dites Jésus est avec moi, cet esprit dans mon cœur, priez. Or en ce moment, Jésus est avec moi et le Saint Esprit est dans mon cœur, dans le nom de Jésus. Holy Ghost. Saint Esprit, Saint Esprit. Continue to destroy what is not built by Lord. Destroy what is not of God. Remove that sickness. That the sin, that spirit, that weakness, that infirmity. Begin to remove them, remove them, remove them, remove them. Enlevez-les, détruisez-les. Empieza a remover esa debilidad, esa enfermedad, esa problema en el nombre de Jesús. Tu désinfirmité, les maladies, enlevez-les, détruisez-les dans le nom de Jésus-Christ. Continuez à les détruire, les enlever dans le nom de Jésus. Ah! Le dédor. Say I said to you. Ah! You deceive. I say to you. Ah! You infirmity. I say to you. Ah! Ah! 
to watch your screen. What you are seeing right now is not ordinary saliva, but poisonous substance from his system. It's what the young man is vomiting out. And that is the power of God Almighty flushing out all the poisonous substance from their system. We was fear not. Jesus has defeated Satan. He has defeated sickness. He has defeated infirmity. He has defeated poverty. Yes, fear not. In the name of Jesus. Right now, open your lips and begin to confess your victory. Confess your victory over sickness. Confess your victory over deceit. Confess your victory over infirmity. Confess your victory over poverty. Confess your victory over ashes. Confess your victory over circumstances. Begin to dominate circumstances around you. Cast in situation. Dominate them. Dominate them. Dominate them. Dominate them. Dominate them. Jesus has defeated Satan. Right now, open your lips in the name of Jesus. Be free. I command your freedom in the name of Jesus. That sickness, that disease, wherever it is, be free in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every spirit that attack your body, that attack your organ, be free in the name of Jesus. I command them out. Share all. Jesus has overcome. Jesus has overcome. Jesus has overcome for you. Jesus has defeated Satan for you. I say, yeah! Every spirit that attacks your body, that attack your body, that attack your body, that attack your spirit, that attack your organ, in your blood, in your kidney, in your liver, in your flu, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I say, oh, you sickness, oh, you sickness, oh, you deceive, oh, you infirmity. I can hear you out. I can see them out. They are given way, they are given way, they are given way. Rejoice, rejoice. I can see them out. out. I can see them out. I can see them out. I can see you being healed. I can see you being delivered. I can see you being saved. I can hear you. Let me hear your voice. In the name of Jesus. Speak to me, speak to me, the voice of victory. I want to hear voice of victory from you. Voice of victory. 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 I am free. Defeat and failure are things of the past. I am free. Defeat and failure are things of the past. I am free. Defeat and failure are things of the past. I am free. Defeat and failure are things of the past. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear your voice. In the name of Jesus, rejoice. Jesus has overcome. The voice of overcomer, I am free. The voice of overcomer, I am delivered. 
The voice of overcomer, la voz de un vencedor, defeat and failures el fracaso, are things of the past. Es un asunto del pasado. Let me hear, let me hear, let me hear. If it's the same with you, defeat and failure are things of the past. Let me see your art. I recognize that. I believe that. What of you? Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Viewers all over the world, your joy, your joy as overcomer. Very important. Because I can see you succeed. Being healed. Being delivered. Being saved. Hallelujah. You are in the right hand. You know the power you are under. Okay. You know the power you are under. Okay, that, that is joy. It is when you don't know where you are, you begin to say, ah, I don't know, I don't know. And you know God does as a way. A fibro came out. You that have fibro, you may suddenly get home. By the time you are sleeping the night, fibro on the bed. Because you have been set aside. Tell your neighbor, I have been set aside for the Lord. Attention. You listen to me? Your coming here is to set you aside for the Lord. Attention. Say, attention. Say, I have been set aside for the Lord. Attention. So, attention means the Lord is on the way. What you are here for today may not be the right time, but when it is right time, it will come because you are set aside. You know, in many hospitals where they have a lot of patients, when it is your time, doctor, about to attend to you, they will call you, give you a date. When it's your date, it's your date. Now you have been set aside. Tell your neighbor, I have been set aside. By cherubim. Cherubim, cherubim. Cherubim. Cherubim, they have set you aside. For Jesus' attention. So, since you have been set aside, I have to withdraw. So, this is what we are praying for. That is law. Here are your children. And the Lord okay. Okay, wait. Okay. Yes. Yes. At the right time, you want to give you now. You know, if you know you have been set aside, let me see you. So, you take your pen when you leave here and write it down that I have been set aside for the law attention. So now I'm withdrawn. I'm called to pray for you now since you have been set aside. The case is not with me again. God is on top of Forever
Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the, the meaning of being set aside means you hear rain coming. You'll be hearing the, 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 the sound. And the weather will change. It's about to rain. It means God has released that rain. Now it's coming. You believe that? Take your pen, write it down. That T.B. Joshua said, I have been set aside for the law attention. Right now, your country, your nation, whatever you have as a contact, if you don't have any, you and your nation, wow. Open your lips and pray for your nation. God intervention. God intervention. Intervention de Dios en God su nación. Intervention. God intervention. Intervención de Dios en su nación. God intervention. Intervención de Dios en su nación. Prayer. 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 Demandez la intervención divina de nuestra nación en nuestro país. Prayer por nuestro país en el nombre de Jesucristo. Ahora mismo levante su bandera y ore por una intervención divina, una intervención de Dios en su nación. God intervention. La intervención divina. Intervención de Dios. With God, all things are possible. Avec Dieu, toutes choses sont possibles. With God, all things are possible. Con Dios, todas las cosas son With possibles. With God, all things are possible. Avec Dieu, tout est possible. We pray for our nation. Oremos por las naciones. Lord Jesus. Nous prions pour la nation, Seigneur Jésus. Help our nation. Señor Jesús, ayuda a nuestra nación. Peace and tranquility. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Paz y tranquilidad en I can hear Jesús. you again and again. Every area of your nation, we need God's intervention. Economic, social. En lo social, en lo Lord, we need your intervention. Peace. Señor, necesitamos we need intervention. God's intervention. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Give thanks to God for God's intervention. Right now, for those of us that just come into Christ and those who come to rededicate themselves, let us open our lips and call His Majesty Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. Señor Jesus, come into our hearts. Señor Jesus, ven a mi corazón. It is when Jesus is in our heart we can have this permanent peace. There is no other peace. When Jesus comes into our heart, Holy Spirit dwell. Lord Jesus, Señor Jesus, come into our heart. Señor Jesus, ven a mi corazón. Wash us with your precious blood. Wash us with your precious blood. Lord Jesus, Señor Jesús, save our soul. Señor Jesús, salva nuestra alma. Make us your channel. De nuestro canal, haznos un canal. Your channel of shining light. Canal de lumière éclatante, tu canal de luz brillante. Where there is darkness. Y el tinéb, donde hay oscuridad. You know, as we are going, we are going back to the world, where there are darkness everywhere. When you are a channel of channel light, a channel of Jesus, you give light. Make us a channel of channel light. Where there is darkness. Lord Jesus, make us your channel of love. Where there is hate. Out there, hate everywhere, hate. But when you are a channel of Jesus, channel of love, you redeem many places. Lord, make us a, your channel of love. Where there's hate. 
Lord Jesus, make us your channel of pardon. Señor Jesús, haznos un canal de perdón. Where there is injury, donde haya heridas. You know there is misrule, injustice everywhere. As you are here today, once you live here out there, oh my God, misrule, misrule, misjudge everywhere. The Lord wants to make you His channel of pardon. You have the ability to pardon where there's injury. Lord Jesus, Señor Jesus, make us your channel of forgiveness. Yeah, they sin everywhere. We are in the world, but we are not part of the world. Sin everywhere. When you are a channel of forgiveness, you have the ability, ability, Lord Jesus. Make us a channel of forgiveness. Where there's what? Sin. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, make us a channel of faithfulness. Lord Jesus, your channel of obedience. In Jesus Christ's name. I can hear your amen. You know what it means to be a channel of God? Say to I'm a channel of God. You know, God has no mouth but our mouth to tell people how he died, how he rose. He has no tongue but our tongue to speak for him. He has no hand but our hand. So now you are a channel of God. I can hear you. If you know you are a channel of God, I want to see, I want to see you. Let me see the channel of God. Channel of God, Channel of God, mean you are a channel of pardon. Channel of God, you mean you are a channel of forgiveness. Channel of God, you are a channel of what? Channel of forgiveness. Wow, I want to salute you. It shall be permanent. So, in me, as you are going now, you are ready to forgive. You are ready to paddle. Yes. You are ready to love. Yes. This is channel of God. Yes. I pray this message will find a place in your heart. Yes. Good morning, Josh. Hallelujah. Amen. We are at home, wherever you are, we salute your faith. Thank you, Lord. We continue to move according to the Spirit of God, wave. When He wave this direction, we follow, that direction, we follow. That is uh, the message you are receiving every week, like with the issue of Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. That means if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. I know Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. So this is an issue we are going to talk about today. Our title, Knowing Jesus, Knowing the Holy Spirit. Let someone say. If you say you know Jesus, we don't know the Holy Spirit, that is not Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a spirit and his worshiper must do so in spirit and truth. What kind of Jesus are we talking about? Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So we take our test from 
various book, First Corinthians chapter two, and I'll take my reading from the beginning to the end. And the John sixteen, you can take your reading from beginning at your time. So that John three verse twenty seven also will give you some clue of what we are about to talk about today. And the second Corinthians five verse seven about faith. And then take it back to the second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen. That one too will help you. Thank you. Let's take our reading from the book of First um, Corinthians chapter two. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. Verse 2, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive way, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Verse 5. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Hallelujah. Amen. When you now go down, you find God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit. This is verse 6. We do ever speak a message of wisdom among the mature. That is, among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the ruler of this age. So you take your time to read to the end. Like many other books have been given to you. Hallelujah. Taking your reading from verse 1 to the end, that's First Corinthians chapter 2 you will find that the spirit is the organ by which we apprehend divine things. Man's spirit is dead because of sin. The natural man, that is, the man of might and the intellect, cannot understand nor receive things of the spirit. Where there is no vision, people perish. And this is what is going on now. This is what is happening in our generation. Things are perish. You cannot see Satan in the natural. I do not see Satan in the natural. I see Satan on the other side. Spirit words. This is where, where there is no vision. Perish. Destruction. Killing. Tell your neighbor, I do not see Satan in the natural. I see Satan on the other side. The spirit world. That is why the Bible says, where there is no vision, People perish. Satan. Tell your neighbor, where there is no vision, people perish. What can you see here? It's impossible to see what is here with your sight. With your sight, it is impossible to see what is here with your sight. Everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's word. If this thing control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian yet controlled by Satan devices. If these things control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian, no doubt. 
yet controlled by what? Satan's devices. Tell your neighbor, I do not say Satan in the national. I see Satan on the other side, the spirit war. Tell your neighbor again. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit because that is where I can hear Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. Timmy Joshua. Yes, sir. In the spirit. But in the natural. Hmm. Can you say the life you live today? I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. God gives us a story to apprehend him. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Don't forget. There has been a great miss up in the church. It is the erroneous assumption that spiritual truth can be intellectually perceived. It is possible to grow up in the church as a baby. Your father is founder of this, founder of that church, founder of that church, and learn all rights, but not know Jesus. Because Jesus is not known by those external things. Jesus is not known by those external things. In that John 16, it is perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that revealed Jesus to us. Perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Jesus to us. You can read your New Testament and still never find Jesus in it. You can be convinced that Jesus is the Son of God and still never find Jesus. You can be a publisher of the Bible. The publisher of the Bible. You can know about Christ dying for you. You can hear this, that religious organization. You can be the founder and general overseer and still never know Jesus of Nazareth in the power of Holy Ghost. In the church, there are two Christ. You need to know the one you are worshiped today. There are two Christ. The Christ of story and of history and song, the baby Jesus. Then there is this Christ which the Holy Spirit reveals. Many people know about Christ, but they don't know Christ. There is a difference knowing about Christ and knowing Christ. In that John 3 verse 27, no man can receive except it is given from above. No man can receive 
except it is given from what? From above. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. If you are risen into Christianity, some wise fellow can raise you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit, because knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit, if you are risen into Christianity without knowing the Holy Ghost and you become a Christian, claim you are a Christian without the Holy Ghost, some wise fellow can reason you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit. Knowing Jesus is knowing the Holy Ghost. This is why you see people today, I'm a member of this church today, I don't want to go to church again. I used to be a Christian, but uh, no, I'm this, no, I'm this, no, I'm a pastor, no, I'm no more. I'm an evangelist, no, I'm no more evangelist. Some wise fellow can reason you out if you are risen to Christianity. Why? Because Christianity falls or sounds on Christ Jesus. Sounds or falls on the illumination of the Holy Ghost. It is either the Holy Spirit or darkness. It is either the Holy Ghost or darkness. The Holy Ghost is God's imperative of life. Imperative of life. If our faith is to be a New Testament faith, if Jesus Christ is to be the Christ of God, rather the Christ of history or story, the illumination of Holy Ghost will tell our heart that we are learning at Jesus' feet, not at man's feet. Are you? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is not, it's not, it's not the mind for applause. It's the mind for crying. So by reflection, because I don't see Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down. So why, why are you clapping? I cannot say Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down, as it should be. The way your forefather serving God, the way your father pray, the way your father fasting, this is the way you are going about serving God. The Christ of history, of story, of song, baby Jesus. Who is Christian among us? Okay, if you are a Christian, can you tell me who is talking to you? Are you seeing beyond me? That is what we call Christian. If you're a Christian, you live by Holy Ghost. You'll be able to see beyond me. You can't see beyond me. You only see me talking to you. That is all you see. That is why you can go out. That is why we can do everything. That is why tomorrow you may, not be able, you may not come to church if you are not here or if you are not blessed. Because you are risen into Christianity. If today is your last day, where are you going? Is there any kingdom for religious? The kingdom come, that will be done. Where are you going if today is your last day? You tell Jesus, I'm a member of this church, I go to church. Is that the excuse you are going to give? I can see Christian among you. I can see Christians. Hmm? We we'll continue the journey. This is the message God has me to give you. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. So thank you. If you have not feel 
with the spirit, you cannot obey the written word. That is the painful part. So you may you are just carrying Bible. And you are just reading the history part of it. Because there is no way you can obey the word of God if you are not filled. That is the most painful part of it. Where is your Bible? See, this one you cannot obey. It. You will just be reading it as a religious man. You read to preach, to teach it, but to lead is not possible. And if you cannot obey scripture, you quench God. You quench him. <laughs> you quench him. That is the most painful part. There is reading the Bible, the carry Bible. Me, the word here is not just history. The Holy Spirit carried the rest along. That's the most painful thing. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. And many of you have read this Bible for five times. We have many publishers here, publishers of the Bible. You know, there are among you that publish Bible for daily bread. Where are we going? That's the most painful part of it. Most painful part of it. Me, Bible, is irrelevant to you. Now, I will be stretching her now. You see people checking? You see people checking? But you don't know what is checking them. The resurrection power that flow within me to them, you cannot see, but you always see people checking. It becomes a magic to you. Ah, what is it? Without touch, what is folly people? You can't see because you are not free to die. It's a training. Your heart, you will not say it all, but your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is blaspheming. Your heart is, is no less. You keep blaspheming. You keep saying what you do not understand. Your heart will blaspheme. This is the problem we find ourselves. I will stand here to tell you, don't go to that church, don't go to that. Why should I say you should not go there? If you go there, you'll be able to see more. Seeing more will help your history. It will make you adequate, serving God. If that church is not good, go there. See with yourself. If you don't see enough darkness, you cannot appreciate light. Please, you are not serving God without the Holy Spirit. If you are serving God without the Holy Spirit, you are serving God you do not. Tell your neighbor, if I serve God without the Holy Ghost, I'm serving God I do not know. It is the Spirit that makes us know Him. Serving God without the Holy Spirit, serving God, you do not know. And this is the God our forefathers served. And this is the life you are living today. Someone keeps telling you what God says. Someone keeps telling you God says you should sleep. That is the life you want to live throughout. God says you should sleep. God says you should wake up. God says you should know. God says you should fast. God says you should this. God says you should go to London. God says, is that the life you want to live throughout? It means you are seeing something God you do not know. Someone is telling you what God says. It means you don't know that God. That's why someone is telling you. For how long? Very, very painful. Tell your neighbor, very, very painful. 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 That is the way I see it. Very, 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 very painful intellectually perceived ah. spiritual truth we can intellectually perceive it very very painful you have to get out of it forget about your problem you don't have problem that is the only problem you have every other problem are no problem the greatest problem is for you to serve God you do not know Tell your neighbor, the greatest problem, all other 
are not problem. The greatest problem is to serve God you do not know. Imagine your age today. How old are you? You have been serving God that you have dream, you have to consult somebody to tell you the meaning. You have job, you want to know whether it's a good job. You want to marry, you carry it medically to know whether it's good. Spiritually, you run from one place to another to know whether it's a right thing. This is the life you have been living. And those lives are not profitable. A man cannot receive except it is given from above. But you can receive, receive from people, receive from people, receive from people. Where are we going? You say you, you are poor. You are not poor. You say you are sick. You are not sick. You are only serving God. You do not know. If you are blessed today and you still continue serving God, you do not know, you will still come back poorer. Unless you serve God, you know. How are you? Where's your husband? He's in Ghana. Your husband is in Ghana? Yes, man of God. You people married when? 2011. And what is happening now? Man of God. This... Do you know the reason why I'm saying this? I'm seeing broken home. Hmm? Yes. I have to, your husband is where? Ghana. Your husband is where? Ghana. Ah, ah. Which husband is that? Okay. Is that true to deceive ourselves? No, man, no, God. Uh-huh. Can you see? Yes, no, if I'm not patient, I will leave you just like that. Yes. But I'm patient enough to drive you, to drive you, to know that you are deceiving yourself. This is the problem of your family that is a divorce. Yes, one of God. <laughs> come on, come here. So, come on. God loves you. Come on! Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Gloria Abiu, and I'm from Ghana. Last Sunday, man of God prophesied to me, as you've seen, uh, where is my husband and what is happening? When did we get married? That this is, you can see separation and it's a problem in the family. I confirm the prophecy to be 100% true. After I got married to my husband in 2011, barely a year, my husband told me that even if I strike myself naked, he doesn't trigger any feeling in him. He doesn't feel anything for me. And he won't talk to me. If I talk to him, he will frown his face back to me. And he has so much deteriorated that he will not hug me, he will not kiss me. From 2013 to today, there is nothing like relationship, no sex, nothing. And he has even given me back his ring. And when I look at his phone, it's not that he's, there is no, there are so many women that I see. Don't judge your husband. That's your husband explain himself. Man of God told me that he's going to call my husband and I believe he's here. Let him come out. They are young people, you know. You know, we young people, we, we lack of patience and uh, all of that. Let's hear from this. <laughs> My name is Dr. Hilario Zabiu. I'm the medical superintendent in charge of Karachi West District Hospital in Ghana. I also act as the district director of health services for Karachi West District. And from 2009 to middle of last year, I've been the only resident medical officer in this hospital that says a population of about 60,000, in addition to five other districts that do not have a hospital. Now, last Monday, 
I received a call, and the caller indicated that the man of God wanted to see me about a prophecy that was apparently given to my wife in synagogue. I think the prophecy was last Sunday, and that's how I ended up coming here. Now, to start with, I think that um, prophecy... I want to thank you for honoring prophet. And the Bible says, you honor a prophet because it is a prophet. We receive prophet reward. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, I think I need to confirm that everything the man of God is true. True beyond what anybody else would think. Indeed, the word the man of God spoke actually reflects my thoughts, my intentions, and my declarations in my heart which I haven't even opened to anyone else. And that's how true and how deep the prophecy is. Now, to start with, what we call marriage started on a very wrong footing. I met my wife for the first time in 2011. That's the very first time I've ever seen her. And we had some chats and discussions, and along the line we realized that perhaps we share values that perhaps uh, we could go ahead and maybe consider marriage. Within two weeks, the only thing I keep on hearing is marriage. Two weeks of ever seeing her. And the next I knew, the mother had also gotten information, apparently, that I had proposed I was going to get married to her. And then how I was going to do that, when, and all of that. And now once the issue had gone out of, between the two of us alone to the family, the pressure was now imminent. Now, before we knew it, well, counseling had started. To the point where we got to the, the counseling ground, finally, I indicated to them that, look, there is a certain burden on me. I am not happy. And to the extent that I am not happy, I don't know what the problem is. But there, there seems to be no connection, no link between the two of us. And so I will prefer that we defer this marriage and resolve the issues before the marriage off. She wasn't willing to listen to anything. Indeed, she won't listen because anybody who tries to pro prolong their marriage is an agent of the enemy trying to snatch, you know, uh, the, the, the good thing that has come into her hand. Indeed, even the counselor told me that even if I had to pretend for the marriage to go on, I should do that. And then I said that, well, let me tell them I know myself too well and that I foresee the problem we are here today trying to solve happening because I know myself too well and I don't get easily moved. And it can only take a miracle of God for me to change under those circumstances. Marriage happened. And for two years, my wife remained with the mother. And I have to leave my patients and come and be attending to her needs under her mother's roof. For two years. That's not even enough. There was now pressure and emotional blackmail. Why I wasn't doing that as frequently as they expect me to. Maybe every other weekend. And this is about six hours drive from where she lives. I have to cross rivers in order to be able to get to that destination. She takes care of bottles. I take care of human lives. And yet I'm the one who has to leave everything. To come and now attend to her needs under her mother's roof. Even after sacrificing my education and everything just to make sure that the marriage she wanted within a certificate of agency was granted. I was still living like a single man. Well, before the marriage we had agreed and I told her specifically that there are a number of things as we go into this marriage. One, I don't want to have anything to do with babies within two years of that marriage. It wasn't even six months. The mother was sponsoring her, left, right, center, goes to see this doctor, go and see this gynecologist, all in an attempt to go and get pregnant. I was stationary watching what all the drama. The baby was not coming. The mother invited me and told me that, look, 
He saw my boss finally, my medical director in the regional hospital, and he told her that my wife doesn't have any problem. The only problem she has is to go and stay with her husband and she'll get pregnant. So she's releasing her to me. And I thought that was the end of the first chapter. We can now begin to start afresh. I think I need to see your mom. So because of that, I will not allow you to leave. Because this marriage is of God. I need to see your mom so that your mommy will understand the, a level in this issue. I think uh, interfering of the mama is, is becoming too much. This marriage is at a bleak of divorce. Thank you. Thank you. So please, so please. My daughter, please, you have to with me. Let's suspend everything until I see mama. Okay. The following week, the lady's mother honored the invitation of the man of God and he came to the synagogue church of all nations to listen to the voice of God concerning the marriage. Watch as prophet T.B. Joshua is guided by the wisdom of Solomon and the right knowledge of God which settles peace. Hearing the voice of God, that will solve the problem. And I know immediately she heard. She said, this is the mother, this is the daughter. And this is our brother. I was saying marriage is of God. Sometimes we feel we love our daughter so much. Maybe our daughter is our pet. So we have so much love. That kind of love sometimes spoils the whole thing. When the marriage is established, they don't want to intrude again. There's little we can do or say or trying to influence. So because they want to establish a home. Our advice is go sometime, but not all the time. So this is exactly what happened. So I think uh, we have done so much in interfering into the, the relationship of this uh, marriage. And it has affected the marriage greatly. This is why I invite you and I'm happy. My brother, I know for quite a long time, when this marriage has been going on, there is so much pain and uh, I think something must have gone wrong. Yes, we, we expected that. But hearing this is God's relationship, settled the matter. Whatever must have gone wrong, which I know, on your side, in your own side. Relationship with others and promise to settle down with another person. A lot of people want to settle down with you because you believe that this marriage cannot come together again. But here you hear the voice of God. When God says yes, no one can say no. So, and I want you to, what you are going to do for me now, those who are on your neck for relationship, those who are on your neck for marriage, I'm going to meet you, I'm going to invite them, and I'm going to be their pastor, I will pray with them. God will give them a better choice than you. God gave us what we don't want sometimes. But later we now see is the right thing to protect us to keep us stronger and to prepare us for the challenges ahead. Are you with me? Sometimes God gives us a woman we don't want naturally. And we keep saying, ah, no, this woman is not the woman I would have want to marry. But God says, oh, yes, this is the marriage to protect your life. Woman, sometimes, God gives us husband. Naturally, we don't like to marry, but we suddenly find ourselves in the house. Bam! After first week, first month, second month, sixth month, sometimes many people a year before they realize that, ah, people prefer to marry that man, that man, that man. If you are not married this man, 
who know what will have happened to you? If you are not married this lady, who knows what will have happened to you? Look beyond marriage. Look beyond sleeping on the bed to go together. There is more to that. And I'm going to talk to Mama. Mama will, will hands up. And area we want Mama to interfere. The area we want Mama to interfere, we call her to that. Mama have seen and they have seen. Mama thought you people cannot live without his uh, counseling. Mama have realized that even his counseling is organized the whole thing. This knowledge. Some of our mommy, they believe that our daughter, our son will not be able to cope with the marriage without their interfering. But sometimes their interfering cause divorce. If I'm talking to you, whereas sometimes God also allow them to interfere, but in some certain issue. So they say, "Mommy, you're a good woman, for half the heart for God." So my brother, I know we need to work on some matter. You listen to what I'm saying. You hurt this man more than the way he hurt you. Two of you share the offense, but you hurt him more than the way he hurt you. You 50 percent, 15 percent, 15 percent hurt, and you 50 percent. Because I'm not going to talk about my mom. Because our mommy tried to help them. But now the help is not working. Mama is ready to help them in prayer. Just prayer. I will support you in prayer. If anything you want her to come, you invite her. It's not going to your place without invitation. This is the issue now. Le point de divorcer après la prophétie que l'homme de Dieu avait donné, disant qu'il était sur la brèche du divorce. Nous voyons maintenant la réconciliation et la délivrance so, de ce couple. Nous devons juste parler à notre mère et remercier elle pour son support. Et aussi, non pas que nous désirions son support, mais nous voulons juste que Dieu soit le premier. Quel autre conseil soit le second. Ok Yes. Merci. 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 Like, like, like we have said, we appreciate your support and your love, but we just want God's love first. Any other love should be secondary. So anytime we need you, we need your help, we need your support, we invite more. You know, Mama, every Mama at home, they really want to do, the, they want to make sure everything is perfect, but sometimes it may not be the will of God for tea to run like that. So thank you, Mama. Thank you very much. Thank my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Con la restauración familiar en esta familia que estaba a punto de divorciarse, pero hace hace una semana recibieron profecía por parte del hombre de Dios y hoy aquí están siendo restaurados por el amor de Cristo Jesús. Emmanuel. My name as Dr. Hilarious Abiu, and on my left hand side is my lovely wife. I am the medical superintendent in charge of the Karachi West District Hospital. I also double as the acting district director of health services for the district. And at the national level, I'm the general secretary of all the managers of our hospitals in the country. About 
a month ago, uh, as was played in the, in the clips previously, um, my wife was here and received a prophecy concerning our marriage, which was heading for the rocks. And on the basis of that prophecy, I was invited by the man of God, and I followed up and uh, responded to that call. Um, and indeed, the, I need to first of all again, for the second time, confirm that virtually everything the man of God said was true. Um, indeed, when he mentioned to my wife that which marriage are you talking about, I think what we, where we all need to understand is that at a certain point in that marriage, I had declared myself, you know, single, and I took my, my rings off in protest, even though I didn't tell her, I didn't tell anybody. As far as I'm concerned, I was single, even though on paper we were married. So, indeed, the man of God was looking beyond what was physical. Now, the situation was, was so bad. Um, we will be in the house. I mean, if she comes to me, for the period she comes to me, we are like total strangers. I mean, just how you get any stranger in the house. We hardly talk. I mean, maybe if she asks me anything, I either say yes or no, if I'm in a good mood. Otherwise, I just ignore and walk away. Occasionally, if I think it was okay, I'll send a, a text message or something if I want to tell her something, you know, that uh, I cannot hold back. Okay, so essentially this was the, the kind of situation we're dealing with. She mentioned that we haven't had any sexual encounters. Indeed, that's the case. I mean, nothing intimate, nothing, no sex, nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing for three years. And I couldn't be too bothered about that either. Now, so essentially that was it. Comes to food. I mean, I decide what I want to eat. That's if I'm in a good mood, I eat. Otherwise, I have other places I, I get my food, you know. So, I mean, there was absolutely nothing like marriage, you know, except for what was written on paper, you know, to, uh, that there was a marriage. So, everything was, was, was collapsed. Now, so we came. And then um, the man of God dealt with the issues not only from the point of counseling, but also from the spiritual perspective by offering prayer and deliverance and all of that. And we went back. And I can say that the very first thing, the very first evidence of, of a change that I realized, which was the most important to me, was that the pain, the hurt, and everything which was in my heart was gone. Was gone completely. I mean, it was as though nothing happened. <laughs> and so then, it offered the opportunity to start afresh. Now, well, she drives me to work. Even if it's in the middle of the night, sometimes I get home, usually around 11 p.m. after leaving home around 6. She'll be awake, she'll come to the workplace, she'll come and pick me home. Well, I'm enjoying the chauffeur. She now brings my food to the workplace. I mean, it's just one event after the other. But generally, I think that uh, the fig tree has been cursed from its roots, and we are absolutely sure that it will wither away just as these pieces of evidence are showing. So indeed, it didn't just end there. I think that for that month of February, whilst that prophecy came, even whilst I was away, I didn't even listen to the prophecy. I didn't watch Emmanuel TV that day because I had a meeting on that Sunday. A lot of other things were kicked into action in terms of bills. Generally, I think that the family has had these problems of stagnation or nearness. Everybody tells you in the family that you are doing so well, but when it matters most in terms of recognitions, awards, promotions, it never happens. And I've been at my post for almost seven years you know, uh, without a promotion. And yet I get everybody can walk around and says, look, you are doing so well. I mean, how, how could you have achieved all of this? And yet the promotion simply will not come when it matters most. Within, I can say that within that month of February, um, two promotions came at the same time. <laughs> the first promotion had to do with my technical grade as a medical officer. 
to a senior medical officer rank. The second one, which was rejected earlier, about uh, three or four years back, was my, my application to the Ghana Health Service to be confirmed as a substantive medical superintendent of the hospital I manage. That confirmation also came. So now, from the Ghana Health Service Council, came the appointment as a substantive medical superintendent of the Karachi West District Hospital. I have just received in that month of February the salaries and these arrears for the technical grade, which is a, the senior medical officer promotion. And in this month, I'm expecting that the managerial appointment also and his salary and uh, arrears uh, will fall in the pot. <laughs> As if that was not enough. Um, when I came here the first time, uh, the first Sunday, I went back quickly because I asked permission that I needed to go back to work and return the following Sunday. And when I went, I picked up two awards again at the regional level. I was awarded as the overall best health worker for the entire Volta region, 2015, and then also the overall best hospital manager called the medical superintendent also for the entire region. Yeah, and two, two weeks after that, that was after the resolution of the matter, an international NGO located in the U.S., that is uh, General Electric and its partners, through their GE Foundation partners, also gave my facility itself, also under my leadership, two new awards. So it's been a month of twos or doubles of everything. <laughs> now, so you'll find that on this uh, uh, board are pictures of the plaques I received. The first one here, which is for the best health worker, Volta Region for 2015. And then the second one, also bearing my name, is best medical superintendent, Volta Region in 2015. And then on the extreme left um, is a citation, uh, which was given me by the Regional Director of Health Services. Uh, wish I could just give you the last paragraph of this citation just so you appreciate the recognition. Now, it says that in the same year, the Regional Director of Health Services also assigned you additional responsibility as an Acting District Director of Health Services in addition to being confirmed a substantive medical superintendent by the Ghana Health Service Council. Indeed, within six months of taking up the distressed district health directorate, you and your team ensured that revenues increased by as much as 350% over the previous year and 128% at the end of the year 2015. The DAG and the hospital also received the highest increase in revenue generation in the entire water region for 2015 over the previous year's figures. Indeed, of all the facilities in the region, only your hospital is on record to have set all its indebtedness to the regional medical stores despite non-payment by NHIS. Your proven record of transformational leadership earned you a call-up to participate and meet President Obama of the United States of America in 2014 in his flagship leadership program for young African leaders, the Mandela Washington Fellowship. In the selection, over 50,000 applications were received from across the whole of Africa, and only 500 selected, putting you in the top 1% of promising young African leaders. Among this and many other outstanding achievements, the Volta Regional Health Directorate awards you on the 11th day of February 2016 as the best overall regional health worker and the best regional medical superintendent for 2015. Uh, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So we can understand from our brother that all of this recognition, promotion, awards actually came within the same period where the word of prophecy was given to his wife and the reconciliation took place to show you that indeed the Spirit of God is involved. And as he received prayer, not only was the marriage 
issues settled, but the spirit that was causing backwardness and delay in promotion was also removed, as we can see uh, by the wonderful recognition he's received thereafter. One more time, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, again, I think that um, I indicated that over three years I have had to drop my ring in protest. And I think that with the reconciliation, it was proper, even if it's for symbolic reasons, that I go back for what I had dropped three years ago. And so now on my finger rests the very same, you know, uh, married ring which was offered in 2011, signifying the dawn of a new day. Glory be to God. We thank Jesus Christ once again for what he has done uh, in this marriage. And so as you read the citation, you mentioned something briefly concerning an opportunity you had to go to America to meet with President Obama. Can you just briefly explain what happened in that instance? Yeah, I think that the, the issues of stagnation uh, and all of that I've mentioned previously. And it was after a period of time when everything appears to come to standstill, no recognition, nothing despite hard work, I came um, across, you know, the, the morning water. I started ministering it. And the significant thing that happened uh, after ministering the, the morning water, and this was around 2012, what I noticed, first of all, that happened was that uh, a number of negative dreams which I was having since I was in medical school, in fact, since I was in the university, I, I mean, I've always dreamt I was wearing primary school uniforms, you know, junior secondary school uniforms, I climb, you know, story buildings, and at a, at a point, I, I feel I can't go on again. I come down, you know, because I was afraid of the foundations and all of that. Everything changed. I now dream I'm in the university. I've graduated, you know, I'm all over the place. I'm in an MBA class. And so everything changed from the dreams, first of all. And the most significant of them was that I had an encounter in the dream with what I'll call a, a, a rebel leader or a spiritual force. It was like my entire community has been in bondage and I couldn't go anywhere. The numbers were so huge that I decided, well, I can escape. But when I escaped, they were following me. Now, so what I had to do at the time was then I realized that when I fell down and then they were going to capture me, I had running water in my pocket. So immediately I brought it out, I sprayed it. The guy came down and I was gone. And that was the beginning of the changes I found. The first thing was that I got admission back to start an executive master's in business administration at Gimpa, Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration. Whilst there, I studied leadership. And within that same period, I saw this advert uh, by President Obama for some leadership fellowship that was being organized. And there, I put in the application, application of the very same things that I wrote in the MBA class. And before I knew it, I got, you know, the appointment signed by the ambassador and before I knew it I was in the US <laughs> I mean what had the recognition that not come in my home country was not coming from the most powerful person at the time you know you know President Obama in the university even at the end of the session my colleagues gave me the opportunity to be the one who speaks on their behalf summarizing all so I was sitting on the high table you know Representing my colleagues and met President Obama as well, you know, having some good handshakes. So all of these events started unfolding after the administration of the morning water and keeping faith with the man of God through Emmanuel TV. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So our brother's explaining that this testimony began even before the prophecy that brought the reconciliation between his wife how a breakthrough initially started through ministering the morning water. And so we can just see a few items on, on board here. Just explain that to us in reference to the testimony you've just shared now. Okay. Now, at the very bottom, it was a letter that was signed by the ambassador, Ambassador Kress, um, in 2014, uh, announcing my success through the interviews and selections 
for the, the fellowship. Um, this is my ID card I was using in 2013 when I entered Gimpa. I've had to defer the course in order to attend the, the, the fellowship and then came back to continue. Now, in the pictures, here in Morgan State University, uh, on the stage with all the dignitaries was myself delivering, you know, the, a message on behalf of the fellows to the gathering at the closing ceremony. In my hand also here is a certificate um, which was awarded to us. In fact, uh, most of our other colleagues in the other universities had either one or two certificates, but in my particular case, we had about six different certificates from the governor of Maryland. Uh, we had one also from the council, the mayor, the university, among many others. And then finally, we, we got the one that was signed by President Obama himself, which is the one here. And in the picture there, you find myself in my typical dress with President Obama in the background. And then this also was the session when the president, before he left the stage, came round to give us, uh, those of us who were positioned very close to him, a handshake, you know, before leaving the podium. And that's President Obama's back there, and that is myself after having um, a handshake with President Obama. Glory be to God. We thank Jesus Christ for everything he has done in this family, and especially the wonderful reconciliation that happened after the prophetic word upon all of this breakthrough that initially started. We thank God for crowning it with this wonderful reconciliation. And uh, so we believe you're in a real position to give a, a word of advice, especially uh, concerning this issue of marriage, young couples like yourself who may be facing challenges. Uh, you're a living example of what Jesus Christ has done, restoring and reconciling your own marriage. What is your advice? Well, I think that generally for all of us, if, if we, we go even on the internet, we, we find that the divorce rates, you know, are, are quite high and keep on going high, not only within the world, but even within Christendom as well. Um, I think that, first of all, the devil recognizes that marriages, and for that matter, families, are the foundations of any society. And so if you have to destroy any society, the place to attack is a marriage or, or family units. And I believe that that is the principal reason that we have a lot of these broken marriages and divorce. Sometimes I hear uh, some people, after three months, one month of marriage, they are gone. I mean, the divorce, the, the marriage is gone. Now, for me, I think, uh, in my view, the fundamental reason this is happening so frequently now is because we have deviated, particularly for those who are Christians, away from the biblical order, the biblical foundation that, you know, the Apostle Paul lays, and where he says specifically, detailing everybody's role. For husband, our responsibility is to love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. For wife, it, says it is submission, submission, and submission. And for, for, for children, it says, respect your, your parents in the Lord because it's good. For that to happen and i think that what has happened here with the man of god the very last time we were here was a restoration of that biblical order which is necessary for the for, for family units you know to stick together <laughs> besides having put that biblical order and everybody playing his role as the scripture rightly puts it it's important for us to learn forgiveness through love because it says love is the greatest, and we need to be able to learn to forgive. Because it's only forgiveness that can make us go past all the offenses and still hold on together as family units. But for many who are also going through the same difficulties and problems that we have gone through, I think that we need to take solace and understanding in the man of God's words that anything that is close to God, anything that is of value to God, receives attacks. And so the higher the attack, that is a time to get even more closer to God. And for as long as you believe in God, and for as long as you believe in his prophets as well, the Lord will come through and the pain will become a testimony. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So at this point, we want to hear from your wife as well, uh, her own side of this wonderful reconciliation and testimony. 
So, madam, you're welcome. Please introduce yourself to us. Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Gloria Abu, and this is my lovely husband. In fact, I'm the happiest woman ever on this earth today. Last month, on um, 31st of January, yeah, that's two months ago, my, I came to Synagogue Church of One Nation, and I was privileged to be prophesied to by Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. And in fact, I didn't even know what to say when he approached me, but I thanked him so much that he had the patience to speak to me. And at the end of the prophecy, he told me that he was going to call my husband and reconcile us. And truly, to the glory of God, we are here to testify for the goodness of God. Amen. In fact, after the reconciliation, I never knew that the miracles can be so quick and fast like that. <laughs> when the very first day we reached Ghana, we met as husband and wife for three good years. For three good years, I, I couldn't believe it. It was so amazing. I never knew it would have happened. And that was the beginning of a beautiful marriage. My husband now has his ring on. He doesn't frown at me when I talk to him. He loves me as a husband supposed to love the wife. And I don't even have to go to him to call him for anything. He willingly comes to me. And I'm, I'm so happy and overjoyed. And I thank God. And this cannot happen if it's not through God using our senior prophet, T.B. Joshua. It is only through a true man of God like this that this could happen. Because this marriage, in fact, I lost hope. That is why I was here. I never knew it could happen. But God used his man of God, prophet T.B. Joshua, to restore this marriage to his glory. A million thanks are not enough for what Jesus Christ has done. So, madam, in the same vein, what is your advice to our viewers all over the world, especially in this area of marriage relationships? My advice to the viewers all over the world, and especially couples, is that when you have challenges, as the man of God said, don't run away. Dig deep and fight it through. Make sure that you build your relationship with God and let the word of God be the integral part of your being. And trust in God. Have faith in him. And don't forget to watch Emmanuel TV and pray with all the faith tools that man of God has willingly given us so that one day you also stand here and give your testimony to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We thank Jesus Christ once again for this wonderful reconciliation and the breakthroughs that have come. And we pray that God Almighty will continue to give the two of you the grace to make his word the standard for your life. And we know you're coming back with more wonderful testimonies to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Nous venons d'entendre le merveilleux témoignage de ce couple. Nous l'avons vu quelques minutes auparavant sur la vidéo. Rise up, let's of this prayer, you ask God to give you the grace not to be ignorant of your faith under pressure of temptation, pressure of temptation of sickness, disease, or whatever. Ask God to give you grace. Give me grace, Lord, not to be ignorant of my faith under the pressure of temptation. Pressure of tension, of temptation, of sickness, disease, hardship, set by. The maladie de la grâce, de ne pas être ignorant de ta foi, de la pression, de la tentation, de le, des épreuves, de la maladie ou des difficultés. Pídele a Dios que te dé la gracia de no ser ignorante de tu fe, bajo tentación, bajo problemas, 
whatever you are facing under that temptation, ask God, Lord Jesus, give me the grace not to be ignorant of my faith under the pressure of temptation of your situation. What is your situation? Because when the situation comes, we seem to forget that we are Christian. Demandez à Dieu de vous donner la grâce d'être conscient de votre force, même face à l'adversité et aux difficultés. In Jesus Christ's name. You know, you seem to forget when you are facing a challenge, when you are facing a situation, you seem to forget that you are what God says you are. You can do what God says you can do. You seem to forget you have what God says you have with God, with you, all things are possible. You seem to forget when you are facing situation. You and God together, you seem to forget that you and God can move mountain. You seem to forget when you are facing difficulty. You have to come together, you and who? You and God must come together, join hand together. There's no monte, and there shall be no monte. You and God. But you seem to forget this when you are facing what? Difficulty. You need to remember the more difficult and trial time you're facing in the past. The key to succeed in life if you're a child of God. Anytime there's difficulty, quickly remember the more trial and difficult time you faced in the past. This will impart strength to face the present difficulty you have. Just take your time to remember. This is what happened to, to Defi. Defi walked majestically to King and said, King, I'm going to face this gladiator that has disturbed my brother and country. The king looked at him, Who are you? He said, Yes, I used my bare hand to kill the bear. And then when this man came to disturb their country, he could clearly remember the difficult and trial time he overcame. And he now look at Bear to Goliath. He said to them, let me face this man. So in the same day, that is the key for you. To defeat your present situation. Tell your neighbor, this is the key to defeat my present situation. Yeah, you can use the same key to open and to lock. Remember, if he remembered, and he walked majestically to the king, take your time, sit down. Anytime you are facing a challenge or situation, remember the more difficult and trial time you had in the past and you overcame. So that will impart strength to face your present situation. I don't know what I can face now that could be greater than the one I have faced in the past. Can you see? In the same day, I don't know what you can face now that can be greater than the one you have passed through in the past. Once you remember this, that will impart a strength to face your present situation. 
you remember half of us here came from village. If not 90% of people here came from the village. You should remember those days when you are drinking dirty water. But today you are drinking pure water and yet yellow fever. Now you are drinking pure water. Where does the fever come from? Tell me. You, you are from the village. You remember in those days when you cook soup, this soup can spend 10 days. You keep warming the soup. Keep warming the soup. And the more you warm, the more it's sweet. you warm the soup today? When you cook soup today, can you warm it tomorrow and eat it again? But in the village, these are the things that brought you up. Remember how you were born. Many of you were not born in the hospital. The people you call your enemy now, you know you are a little baby in their prayer. They are the one feeding you when you are a baby. Your mommy alone cannot take care of you. They will leave you. You'll be roaming about, moving around, moving around. You move around them. But today you have seen them as someone who can kill. So this is the key I'm giving you today. That any time you are facing a difficult challenge, remember the more difficult and trial time you had in the past. This will impart what? To what? To face what? To face your present situation. You need strength. Are you talking of your career? Remember the kind of school you attended in the village? School without roof. School without what? You study there under the rain, under the sun, but today look at what you become. And if you don't know the kind of school you attended in the village in those days, go back to the village, go and see where those children are studying now. So these are the things you put together. When you think about all day, you know no one can stop you. Say, only me can stop myself. No one can stop me. No one can stop you. You can only stop yourself. If you could not be stopped then, now no one can stop you. So you need strength to form. This is how I not show myself. No matter what come to me now, when I just remember, when I just sit down and look at my accident, my accident where I am coming from, what I've gone through, and whatever happened now, I smile. I say, you are a baby. I smile. Once you don't trade your joy with your situation, you overcome. Tell your neighbor, stop trading your joy with your situation. Once you stop trading your joy with your situation, you will always overcome. Because you need joy to overcome a situation. No matter how big the situation, if you don't trade your joy with that situation, you overcome it. But once joy is gone, you cannot overcome the situation. This is what situation wants to take away from you. He wants to take away your joy. <laughs> My God. He wants to see you sad. Situation to see you what? He wants to see you sad. And once the situation comes and you are sad, I will let go of this. Oh my God. 
This is too much for me. Then, under that situation, you cannot pray. Under that situation, you cannot think of God. Under that situation, oh, immediately you lose a sense of reasoning. Anybody around you is your enemy. You will not be able to give your best. There's a phone call. I pick it. <laughs> I pick it. I say, hello, your house is, is on fire. You mean my house? Yes, it's serious. Firefighter, they are there. You know, I was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> People around me will say, what happened? What happened just now? What happened now? I'm coming, I'm coming. I have trading my war. With war. Look at you, you are happy now. Satan knows what he can do to stop that happiness. He knows. As you are dancing, 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 they just... Somebody want to see you. Huh? Where? You know, see me. Where? <laughs> Don't make it very easy for Satan. Somebody is fighting you, fighting you. Just your strength you have that to fight by. You just relax. You, make, you just make it cheap. You are dancing. Somebody just say, somebody want to see you. Just, somebody want to say, where? Where? Somebody want to say where? Okay, there, I'm coming. You want to feel it dancing? <laughs> How many of you can do that? Have you ever finished dancing before you attend to somebody want to see you? No, I know you. So please, stop trading your joy with your situation. If you have serious pain in your hand, you can choose not to trade that pain with your joy. Serious pain. <clears throat> How are you? Fine. The pain is there. Fine. <laughs> I have not been seeing you. Fine. I'm, I was not around. Okay. <laughs> you know, that pain is just I mean. The pain does not want to hear joy. When there is pain and joy is there, the pain will not last. Where there is sorrow and joy is there, the joy will not last at all. They don't see. It's like cat and rat. You that are looking for a job, if you can choose to be happy, you will soon get a job. You that are sick, if you can choose to be happy, the happiness from the heart, with that sickness and you choose to be happy, that sickness will not last long. Your marriage is under threat and somebody trying to, to turn it upside down. Choose to be happy and see what will happen next. Do you know it is the situation that meets joy? It's not joy that meets situation. Tell your neighbor, situation meets joy. Joy never meets situation. If you study your life, it is situation that makes joy. In one slide, situation come to joy. It is joy that owns you. Situation never owns you. Situation meets joy. When snake is coming to your house, you close the door. You don't run away and open the door for snake. So stop trading your joy with what? If you can do this, the situation will come, but it will not last. And you learn a mighty lesson that will help you. <clears throat> Take my accident from beginning since you know me. The name of this ministry is supposed not to be Church of Our Nation. When church was just 18 number, 
the Lord say, this is Church of All Nations. How many ministry you know in your country that bear Church of All Nations? If it is not a ministry of vision and a mission, first church was destroyed, second was destroyed. How many of business you have done and you still remain in that business? I don't think anybody still remain in the business you begin with right from the beginning of your life. After so much challenges, if you don't know where you are going, you cannot continue. You will not be able to wait for God's release if you don't know where you are going. It is when you know where you are going, you will wait for God's release. Tell your neighbor, when you know where you are going, you will wait for God's release. You will wait patiently for God's release. But when you don't know where you are going, you will release yourself. You have been releasing yourself. You release yourself in business, in marriage, in churches, in everywhere. You just, ah, this embarrassment. How can you be lying against me? You walk away. You walk out of the community. You walk out of the business. You walk out of the church. You walk out of marriage. What kind of insult is this? This is embarrassment. I can't believe what you are saying. How can this pastor be lying against me? Eh? You walk out of the church. In my, how can my husband be lying against me? How can my wife do this to me? You walk out of marriage. Business. Oh my God. I'm supposed to be promoted. Look at my junior. I trained this man. Look at him. He has been promoted above me. You walk out of the business. This is the life you have been living Situation has been releasing you. Challenge has been releasing you. You hear what you say? When he was dropping the pit, he said, I know where I belong. Because you don't know where you are going. He was in the pit where there's no water, no air. There, he said, I know where I belong. This is not where I belong. So you may be seated. Thank you. When you are laughing, Satan is crying. When you are crying, Satan is laughing. Are you with me? I said, when you are laughing, Satan is what? And when you are crying, Satan is what? So stop trading your joy with what? With situation. No matter what happens, hold your joy. It is by joy you can overcome your situation. If you lose your joy, Situation will overwhelm you. Situation don't want to see joy. When situation see joy, it ceases. When situation see joy, he what? Immediately. That is, he stopped. Praise the Lord. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God is with us. I greet you all in the name of the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, win today. Win tomorrow. And win forever. If you know you are a winner for life, let me hear you clap more for the Lord. Make a joyful sound to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, Lord, we thank you. Jesus Christ, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Father, we have given up to your will. Put us in a position where you'll be interested in whatever we say and do. In your holy name we pray it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seat. It is another glorious day. 
another wonderful day. In the book of Psalm, 55 verse 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous to be shaken. Meaning, God will never allow the righteous to be moved. He will never allow the righteous to fall. Is this message for you? Are you one of the righteous? The Bible said that Abraham believed in God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in his power to do all things? We know that God cannot lie. Cast your care on the Lord and he will sustain you. He who bears the burdens of your trouble, your life, your worries, your cares, your fears and anxieties, desire you to leave it for him alone. God desires that you leave the troubles of your life for him alone. He does not need the combination of your strength with his to bear it. God does not need the combination of your power with his own power to bear it. He is able. Let someone say, God is able. God is able. I want to hear somebody say, God is, God is able. Let me hear you say to the viewers, God is able. He's able to do all things, more than able. In the beginning, there are things that make God, God. First is word. Believing in himself. Trusting in his word. And the ability to see those words accomplished. And all these are evidence in the manner the earth was formed, all by the power of the spoken word. In the book of Genesis 1 verse 3, God said, Let there be light. And there was light. The Bible said that God saw that it was good, beautiful. He separated the light from the darkness. The light he calls day, and the darkness he calls night. And they were evening and morning, the first day. Genesis 1 verse 11. God said, let the land bring vegetations, seed-bearing plants and trees with fruits and seeds in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. And in verse 26, God said, let us create mankind in our own image and likeness so that they can rule over all that has been made. Dominion. They can take dominion over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, every other thing that moves on the ground. And God created mankind in his image and likeness. He made them male and female. We can never equate ourselves to God because we are not God. You can compare yourself to God because you are not God. Or are you God? No. I'm happy to hear that. We are not God. We are just an act in the master's hand. A beautiful clay fashioned to meet his purpose of which it was made. That is who we are. But for this moment, just now, let us just imagine what it feels for someone to say something and you see it happening now. Imagine the joy within 
for you to proclaim something, positive things, and you see it happening. That was the joy God felt. Great joy. The first day he believed in himself. He trusted in his word. Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. That brings the motivation to work for seven days, all in the power of the spoken word. It was God's word that became the creative essence. The most important part of God that makes him God. And so what do you make of the word? What do you make of the word of God? Tell someone, may God's word be standard for your life. <laughs> Say it again, may God's word be standard for your life. Because God does nothing without his word. He does nothing without his word. He speaks to you through his word. He heals you by his word. God blesses you by his word. He delivers you by his word. God Almighty does nothing without his word. So make the word the standard for your life. And this will bring us to our message today. Your word, your bond. Let someone say, your word, your bond. Your word, your bond. And I've proof test for the message we'll be taking from the Bible in the book of Psalm. Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. How many of us are bold enough to say that today of the Lord? Or how many of us will continue to say that of the Lord? We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Do you believe that what you say is important? Do you believe that your words are important? You should be cautious of your words. Because you either create the word you desire or the one you fear. The word that proceeds from your mouth will either create the word you desire or the one you fear. I have seen people. I have observed people carefully as they talk to themselves. Maybe you might have found yourself in a similar situation where you are busy talking to yourself. Maybe in the private. What are you saying? If it is meditation, what are you meditating upon? What are you busy talking about? Remember that if it is good, it is God. If it is victory, it is God. If it is peace and harmony, it is God. If it is blessing and joy, it is God. But if it is contrary, examine yourself and your life. Examine yourself and your life. We should be cautious of our words and meditations. Because Jesus Christ believes that what you say is important. He cares. He listens and is concerned. Jesus Christ believes that whatever you say is important. He takes cognizance of your words. He listens. He cares about those words. He is concerned. So what do you say? What are you busy talking about? The blessings and the curses that comes your way today is as a result of what you say. If you speak contrary, you think negatively, carelessly, it is because your heart is so. The script says that man thinketh in his heart, so he is. What created your world? Your world rules you and your life. The life you live is determined by the word you speak. Because they are 
bridge to your future. The words that comes out of your mouth are the bridge to your future. So what do you say? They review the kind of heart you possess. Painting a public picture of your inner self. Expressing what you believe within. So what are you busy talking about? Because your word is your bond. If you look at the Bible in the book of Luke 12 verse 20. There is this young rich man. He was busy talking to himself. He was boastful about his riches. Oh, I have done this. Oh, I have done that. I have gathered in van. I will do this. I will sit down and enjoy. He was busy talking to himself. And God said to him, You fool. Tonight, your life will be demanded from you. What are you meditating about? So, so, in the book of Luke 15, the prodigal son talked to himself. He talked to himself about his poverty. And he repented of his waywardness. He said to himself, what a life. What a life am I living in my father's house. They are better off than me. There was genuine repentance within him. He said to himself, I will return back to my father. And indeed, he returned back. And he was received. What are you busy talking about today? What are you meditating about? I want us to open the scriptures to the book of 2 Kings 5 from verse 19. And I read. Go in peace, Elisha said. After Naaman had traveled some distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, he talked to himself, my time was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When I saw him running towards him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Is everything all right? He asked. Everything is all right, Gehazi answered. My master sent me to say, two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. By all means, take two talents, said Naaman. He ought Gehazi to accept them and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags which two said of him. He gave them to two of his servants and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away and they left when he went in and stood before his master, Elisha asked him, Where have you been, Gehazi? Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. But Elisha said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money or to accept clothes or olive groves or vineyard or flocks and herds or male or female slaves? Naaman leprosy will cling to you and to your descendant forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's present, and his skin was leprous. It had become as white as snow. Amen. Here is drama. Somebody was talking to himself there. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the servant of God, was talking to himself. What is my master doing? This is beautiful gift that was brought to us. We never asked for it. He was busy talking to himself. He maneuvered his way. And not just that. He manipulated people too. Just to get those gifts. But you know what? The higher hand was watching. God Almighty was watching. And he cured the wrath of God. 
because of greed in contentment. What are you saying today? What do you say to yourself? What are you busy meditating upon? Many has changed the course of the history of their lives today because of their inability to see beyond their present situations. They think, they talk, and they act negatively to their circumstances. Then you know what? There is no neutral kingdom. No neutral kingdom. If you are not heard by God, you will be heard by Satan. If God is not at work in your life, something is at work. Examine your life and yourself. Examine your life and yourself. What are you talking about? What are you meditating about? Prophet T.B. Joshua said to us here, he said if you speak and your ways is not in accordance with God's word, they will remain idle, meaningless, and oftentimes destructive. So what do you say? What are you busy talking about? Because by your word you'll be justified and by it you'll be condemned. So I pray with you today. May God guide you. May he set a watch over your lips in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ. May God set a watch over your lips in the mighty name of Jesus. May he bind your hand so that they do no evil. May God Almighty bind your hand so that they do no evil. May he give you the humility, the understanding, the willingness to listen to the wise and the experience in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. The word of God is planted in your heart. Your talking will become talking of power with power. Your meditation will become meditation of power with power. And this is all you need to stand against Satan and his evil companion. It's all you need to stand against Satan and his evil companion. And so what are you busy talking about? You have the right to say what God says. If only he has said it in his word. You can confess it knowing that God Almighty will make it good for you. Say to someone, I have the right to say what God says. I have the right to say what God says. If only he has said it in his word. I can confess it. Knowing that God Almighty will make it good for me. What do you say? In the book of John 10, verse 10, it is written, Says the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Christ came that you may have life and have it in fullness. So you can boldly say, I have abundant life dwelling in me because I have received Christ. I have abundant life dwelling in me, inside of me, because I have received Christ. In the book of John 8, verse 32, it is written, said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You can boldly say also, I am free because I know his blessed truth. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the word of God says, therefore, everything has become new. Behold, all things have gone. So you can boldly say, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus with his power in me, with his nature in me, with his ability in me. Those are the words of God. You can boldly confess them to your life knowing that God Almighty will make them good for you. You can speak contrary to God's word and expect his blessings. You cannot speak contrary to the word of God and his faith, his favor, his victory. Words are not cheap. Say to somebody, words are not cheap. Jesus Christ believes that what you say is important. He listens, he cares, and is consigned. So what do you do? Purify.
clarify your word and thought by thinking the thought of Jesus Christ. Because to the extent you think the thought of God is the extent you have the power of Christ. Is the extent you have the power of God within you. To the extent you think the thought of Christ, the extent you have the power of Christ within you. It is God's word within you that produces an overcoming spirit in you. What are we talking about? God's word dwelling in you produces an overcoming spirit within you. And that is David. It was the word of God in his life. Word of God in his heart that became weapon against Goliath. He said to him, this day, God Almighty will hand you over to me and I will strike you down. Before the action. He has spoken victory out in the heart of Silas and Paul. The word of God they confess became an instrument, key, that opened the prison doors. What are you saying today? What are you busy talking about? Things that glorify God? Do you glorify God with your words? Or you put him to test by your words? Examine yourself and your life. Because you cannot rise above the level of your words. And so, my brethren, your word is your bond. It was the word of God in the heart of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego that turned the blazing furnace to high school. What are you busy talking about? What are you saying? God Almighty trusted in his own word. He believed in his own word. And that word became what? The creative essence. That is what my God, God, that we are known to be with today. He trusted in his word. His ability to see that those words came to pass. Whatever he say must be fulfilled. Do you believe that your words are important? You believe now that your words are important? Be cautious of your meditations. Your words. Because Jesus Christ listens. He cares and is concerned about those words. So my brethren, I urge you to, to think what is right. Meditate on what is good. What do you need? You need the presence of God around you. You need God around you. That is all you need. You will need him because you are helpless. You will need God because you are afraid. You will need him because you are lonely and you need a friend closer than a brother. So the people of God, rise above your troubles today. Rise above your challenges today. Rise above your weaknesses today. By the power of the spoken word. Because your word is your bond. You cannot rise above the level of the world. But when God Almighty dwells in your heart, he can take you higher than you can imagine. So I pray that the word of God continue to dwell in you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the presence of God continue to be with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Take care of your word and your thoughts. Bless you. I leave you here in faith. And I pray to meet you here in faith again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let us be seated in the presence of God. Emmanuel. If God is for us, if God is for us, for our sake, every mountain 
shall be leveled. If God is for us, for our sake, every valley will be made plain. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Good morning and win today. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let us thank God Almighty for the grace to be in his presence. Man is certainly undeserving according to his own merit. We are what we are today by grace of God as a Christian. God chooses grace rather than works. So we need to acknowledge that we are undeserving of what Christ has done for us on the cross. The Bible says, he died for us. He reigns in power for us and is still praying for us. So whatever we have in Christ is by grace. No man should boast. Tell your neighbor, I'm a product of grace. You are a product of God's grace. And I'm a product of God's grace. Yes, I'm thankful and grateful to God Almighty for his grace in my life. It is an undeserved favor. My name is Shino John. I've been an evangelist in synagogue for many years. Under the mentorship of my father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, before his glorious transition. God has used him to fish me out and point me to the way of salvation, the way of the cross, to my future success. He has touched my life, touched my family in a very, very special way. It's a real privilege for me to be mentored and cared for by such an anointed man of God. And I will be forever grateful to God Almighty for that privilege. And I pray that he will continue to rest internally in Jesus' name. And I also want to thank our mother in the Lord, the leader of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, for submitting to the will of God, for our motherly love, concern, support, and prayers. I pray the Lord will continue to strengthen, we continue to uphold her and grant her wisdom as she carry on this mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's the greatest opportunity for me in life to share with you the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And his love for humanity is an opportunity for me to tell of his power to forgive, his power to heal, his power to deliver, his power to save. What a real privilege indeed. People of God, life is a mission. And when we are on the mission, we need to sometime stop at interval and assess our progress in order to prepare for the challenges ahead. We need to stop in between steps and refocus our attention on God's word, God's will, and God's purpose for our lives. You see, sometimes when the world around us seems to be coming to an end, you look to the left and what you see is trials and temptation. 
You look to the right and all you see is tribulation, pain, and violence. You look to the back and what you see is failure and disappointment. And you look forward, there's no future, there's no hope. It's in such critical situation that we know who is a man of faith. A man of faith is not overwhelmed by the happenings around, but look beyond them. Are you a man of faith? Ask your neighbor, are you a man of faith? Are you a member of the household of faith? The Bible says, the quality of faith is not measured by our attitude towards God when things are good, but when times are hard. I mean, when our lives seem to be hanging in the balance. Many today that claimed to be man and woman of faith, when they face crisis, maybe lateness in marriage, inability to get job in spite of their qualification and effort, Maybe poverty, in spite of their hard work and goodwill, or delay in childbearing, they begin to say, God, are you not seeing me? Why am I suffering? They begin to complain and cried out to God in panic, in fear, and not in faith. These are the people that try to figure God out through their feelings. When they feel good, they believe that God has answered their prayers. But when they do not particularly feel good, they begin to complain. They begin to rebel. They begin to murmur against God and see Jesus in the bad light. In further reaction, they begin to change churches. And finally, they will seek for alternative outside the church. These are the people that are ruled by their situation. Because they concentrate on how they are feeling. Mm. They concentrate on how they are doing. They concentrate on how they are being treated. Their concentration is on how the circumstances and the situation around them looks like. Their lives are centered on how they are doing. If they are doing well, they give glory to God. Their life is centered on how they are feeling. If they are not feeling good, they see God in a bad light. Their life is centered on how they are doing. How they are being treated. If they help you today and you do not say thank you, they will not help you again because they see you as in great. Their life are centered on how they are feeling, how they are doing, how their circumstances look like, and not on faith. And a Christian does not only live because of faith, but live according to faith. So what are you experiencing as a child of God? What are you experiencing as a member of the household of faith? Is it sickness? Is it disease? Have you suffered a divorce? Has your business collapsed? Is it loneliness? Is it rejection? Whatever you are experiencing now will soon be a memory. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, whatever you are experiencing now, it will soon be a memory. 
It will be part of your history. Remember the heroes and the heroines of faith. What will you say in the future about now? Because your future is being fashioned at this time. God wants to take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. He wants to take you out of sickness into good health. He wants to take you out of sorrow into joy. God wants to take you out of pain into gain. He wants to take you out of frustration into fulfillment. He wants to take you out of that financial difficulties into financial bliss. God wants to take you from that situation you are in to a new level in life and you will not go back. Tell your neighbor you will not go back. That is the promise of God. Your responsibility, your duty is to trust the Holy Spirit. Keep his word in your heart, in your mouth. And every conversation. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. We read verse 7 and 8. That will be the proof test for our message. Jeremiah, chapter 17. We read from verse 7 and 8. And it three doors from verse 7. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. It will be like a tree planted by the waters that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worry. In time of drought. And never fails to bear fruit. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts. That will lead us to the message. Trust God all the time. Tell your neighbor, trust God all the time. Tell the next person beside you, trust God all the time. Yes, the Bible says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord at all times. Are you such a man? Ask your neighbor, are you such a man? You see, in our spiritual walk with the Lord, we will face good times and hard times alike. And we are to trust God in both times. But opposite is the case today. It is worrisome to see Christians panic, troubled during crisis. Such as the tribulation we are facing in these perilous times. You know, perilous times is the call to deal with. But perilous times is demanding for our faith. I mean, our trust in God. This is the time for us to put our faith, I mean, our trust in God into practice. Because the best time to practice your faith is in difficult times. In perilous circumstances, in times of trials and temptations, when there's no money in the pocket and there's no food on the table, when the body is riddled with sickness and afflictions, even when there's no situations, in an ordinary event, an ordinary situation, you need to also practice your faith. Because faith is practical. Tell your neighbor, faith is practical. 
if children of God cannot trust God with their bodies when they are sick, who will believe that they have faith? Hmm? If children of God cannot trust God with their bodies when they are sick, who will believe that they have faith? If believers cannot trust God for the problem arising from their family of what use is their faith to them. If you cannot trust God when you face trials and temptation, when will you trust him? Ask your neighbor, when will you trust him? If you cannot trust him when you are facing trials and temptations, when will you trust him? If Christians cannot trust God for their material riches of what use is their faith to them. When I say faith, I mean your trust in God. That trust in God should be practiced in both good and hard times alike. Because faith is the practical expression of the Christian life. Faith is the practical expression of the Christian life. We walk by faith and not by sight. Our physical eyes can see the present danger. Our physical eyes can see the darkness. But our eyes of faith, we see the solution. Our eyes of faith, we see the way out. Our eyes of faith, we see the light. They don't imagine it. They actually see it. Daniel did not imagine he would be saved in the lion's den. He was actually saved. Because he trusts God Almighty during his trials. What about the three Hebrew men? Meshach. Shadrach, Abednego. They do not imagine that they will be free in the burning furnace. They were free. The fire become ice cold because they trusted in God. What about Paul and Silas? But what can we say about you? When you express the necessary faith, the necessary trust in God Almighty, his duty is to raise you from death to life and then restore your owners. So let us take some cue from biblical characters who trusted God Almighty during their good and high times alike. What will you and I Learn from the book of Job that will help us next time we suffer or face challenges. Please turn with me to the book of Job. Job chapter 2, we read from verse 7 to 10. Job is after the book of Esther. We're going to chapter 2 and we read. From verse 7 to 10. And it three doors. From verse 7. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And afflicted Job with painful sores. From the sole of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery. And scraped himself with it. As he sat among the arches, his wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Should we accept good from God and not trouble? Should we accept good from God and not trouble? 
God allowed Satan to bring upon Job sudden calamities that destroyed every aspect of Job's life. It was sudden. And it destroyed every aspect. Every inch of his life was affected. His children were gone. Ten of them. His wealth mm, was gone. As if that was not bad enough, Satan sought permission from God to afflict Job with painful, terrible disease. So, from the toe of his feet to the top of his head. How did Job respond to all of these laws? How have you be responding to sudden unpleasant situations that occurred in your life. The Bible says, in all of these, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job did not do what? Did not sin by charging God with wrong doing have you not been charged god we run doings in your life when you face unpleasant situation when your expectations are not met have you not been questioning and querying god why must this thing be like this why is this situation like this in my life you begin to regret about your relationship with god but for Job, the Bible says, in all of these, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoings. I will say it again. The quality of faith is not measured by our attitude towards God when things are good, but when times are hard. In spite of the critical situation, that Job was facing, his faith never diminished. The Bible says, he stay focused. More than ever before, today, we failed to trust God in both hard and good times. When the times are good, we lift our hand in praises and say, Jesus, your name be praised. Oh God, you are Lord of Lords. But when things are tough, we begin to mock our faith. We fail to realize that trials offer us the opportunity to honor God before men. People of God, when you encounter trials, test and tribulation is an opportunity for you to honor God before men. It honors God to believe in him even while every sense contradicts him. It honors God to believe in him while every sense contradicts him. God promised to honor those who trust and honor him in times of trials. Those who honor God in their testing, in their trials, prove their sonship. How did Job undo his unpleasant situation? How have you been handling the circumstances, the unpleasant situation that is happening in your life. Job saw his hard times as a reason for believing God just as he has seen his good time as a reason for believing God as well. Listen to that. Job saw his hard time 
as a reason for believing God just as he has seen his good times as a reason for believing God as well. When there was money in the pocket, there was food on the table. He was in good health. Job said, glory be to God. And when he lost everything and his body was reduced with saw, he said, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Glory be to his holy name. When last did you raise your hand in praise to God when you face life uncertainties? Job said, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Glory be to his name. Job was not a man that can be swayed by the opinions of others. His focus is that his attention is on what God has to say about his situation. God's opinion about him. Do you know God's opinion about yourself? Let us take a little self-examination here now. What opinion of others have you acted upon that is affecting your life negatively, whether present or in the past? Praise the Lord. It is time for self examination. What opinion of others have you acted upon that is affecting your life negatively in the present or? In the past. That advice. To seek alternative. What result has he yielded? That advice. To do away with your wife. Because of certain issues. What result. Has he yielded? Are you not regretting. That you should not have done that. So what advice of others have you acted upon that is affecting your life negatively, whether now or in the past? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, advise us that we should be careful of well-intentioned people who give advice from human point of view. Because acting on the advice. Without examining it in the light of God's word. Or examining it from God's point of view. Is very dangerous. Because you may be acting against the will and the purpose of God for your life. The reason why our life is not constant today is because we do not know God's opinion about ourselves. You see, the greatest thing that Satan aims at in tempting God's people is to dislodge them from their position as children of God. The greatest thing that Satan aims at in tempting God's people is to dislodge them from their position as children of God. By the way, he caught their dependence on God, caught their duty to God, and caught their communion with God. Do not allow your situation, your unpleasant circumstances to make you court 
your dependence upon God. Your duty to him and your communion with him. Because if you do, hmm, it's very dangerous. What is expected of you when you are facing trials? What is expected of you when you are facing unpleasant circumstances? You are expected to trust the Holy Spirit because he knows the enemy and he knows the question and answer to the question. <clears throat> Trust in Christ's sacrifice when you are facing trials and temptation. Look to the cross where the price was paid for the blessing you seek when you are facing trials. Tell your neighbor, when you are facing trials, when you are facing difficult times, when you are facing pain, look to the cross where the price was paid for the blessing you seek, for the healing you seek, for the deliverance you seek, for all of the blessings you seek. Trusting in Christ's sacrifice will make you look at things from God's point of view. And when you look at things from God's point of view, you will know God's opinion about yourself and others. So that whatever situation, whatever circumstance that you are facing, you will trust God all the time. Like Job and those in his class did. And they became victorious. So finally, let us take the book of First Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 13. Because for many of us, when we face trials and temptations, we begin to cry and panic out of fear and not out of faith. And like we said, faith is the practical expression of the Christian life. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and it read us. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand under it. Praise the Lord. Take your time to go through that message. Tell your neighbor, he will provide a way out for me. No matter what comes, no matter what happens. For my sake, every mountain shall be leveled. For my sake, every valley shall be made plain. So, is the promise of God. Going by that scriptures, you will agree with me that trials must come. Temptation must come. Difficult time must come, but they are not unto death. Because crisis cannot break the one who relies on God's strength. That is a quote from my father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua. He said, crisis can never break the one who relies on God's strength. Are you? If you are, you will overcome. If you are, no matter what comes, no matter what happens, you will be victorious. Because crisis cannot break the one who rely on God's strength. That crisis, that sickness, that situation is not to destroy you. It's not to impede you 
but to improve you. That difficult situation is not to impair you. It's not to destroy you, but it's to improve you. To mature you. So when you are facing uncommon challenges, don't lose hope. Because crisis cannot destroy you as a Christian. In the same way, the fire cannot destroy gold. If gold must prove itself to be gold, it must pass through what? It must pass through what? Ah, it must pass through fire. So your trials are not to destroy you, but to improve you, to mature you. So when you are facing uncommon challenges, don't lose hope. Don't be fearful. It may be that God is preparing you for the uncommon blessing that is awaiting you ahead. So when you know this as a child of God, you will trust God in both good and hard times. Like, may the Lord bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. I leave you under the atmosphere of absolute trust in God. And I believe I will meet you in the same atmosphere in Jesus' name. Stay in faith and God bless you. Thank you.